The Union Federation Fedusa also saying this afternoon it's not going to take part as it supports the minimum wage. It's called SAFTU's action uh, irresponsible and grandstanding. Uh, standing with me on the Newsday set is Fedusa General Secretary Dennis George. Good afternoon to you. So in what respect then is it grandstanding? The grandstanding occurred and whenever we know the General Secretary of SAFTU, you know, has this tendency over the years. Remember, he coined this thing when Jacob Zuma was running. He said, it's unstoppable tsunami and all those kinds of things. But we have spent two years working together with business and labor and the academics and the ILO to craft an agreement for that 4.2 million people that earn less than 3,500 rand will benefit. So I don't think, you know, that is something that you must just disregard and throw out. And we know a living wage is much more than that, but we need to start somewhere. And what we did, we did it in the interest of our country. But is he not taking the bull by the horns because you concede that uh, this is not a living wage, uh, yet uh, you seem to be happy with the status quo? Did you not capitulate um, and perhaps overcompromise on this issue when you accepted it? No. If you look, first of all, you must always approach negotiations from a research-based approach. Then you must also look in terms of if you're now going to increase that wages to that level, it will become again unaffordable to companies and companies didn't even want to agree to pay 3,000 rand. But when the panel of experts and the ILO came back to us and said, look guys, this is a scenario, 3,500 rand is a good scenario and we must also make provision for some companies that can't afford to pay that amount, that there must be some process for exemption. But doesn't NUMSA have a point when it says it needs to keep putting pressure on this particular process? Look, I mean, you must face economic realities. You know, you can talk big, and talk is cheap. And what is important for us is that we must accept that there's 26% people are unemployed. So if you want to say, no, you're going to do this and do that, it's your business, but we have to look after the workers. But as far as you're concerned, is this national minimum wage debate then over? Are you accepting what it is? Because it's unlikely, given affordability of business in South Africa right now, that they will be in a position, uh, at, certainly in the short term, to offer any sort of increase on that. No, look, what's happening is this, the, the, the regulation is going to be released and the regulation is going to make for a commission. And so there's no business sitting alone and deciding somewhere in some boardroom. There's a commission and the commission will base their work on the research and the process will be transparent. And that's the reason why we must move forward and help the most vulnerable. But already you're on the back foot, Mr. George, because no. government is, is, is pushing this, uh, the implementation of the minimum wage uh, further back. No, no, no. The, the offer that business put on the table was 2.1 million, uh, 2.1, 2,100 in the original offer that they presented to the panel of experts. We've put our proposal on the table of 4.5. Uh, 4,500 rand and government was in between and when they came back with 3,500 rand we felt that was a good start and we're taking the process forward. But how are you taking the process forward given the affordability within the South African economy at the moment? Look, Hasn't this process stalled entirely? No, 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 the process is not stalled entirely. What we are disappointed about is about the fact that the minimum wage can't be implemented on the 1st of May. And we accept that, that we're disappointed about that, but I mean, two months down the line, the people of South Africa that earn less than 3,500 rand are going to benefit. And that is the fact of the matter. If government doesn't further delay the implementation beyond the next due date? No, the, 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 the due date can't be implemented unless something else happens that is unavoidable. But so far, the social partners are committed that we want to make sure that we help the most vulnerable in society to earn more income. So this um, national strike tomorrow, do you think, apart from, as you suggest, grandstanding, is it going to achieve anything at all? I don't think that uh, strike is going to achieve anything because, remember, our legislation are being discussed and negotiated in Netlag, and then Parliament also plays a role that they consult with, pub with the public and um, in that process we don't participate because we are the architects and the negotiators of the deal and so for us the deal must be implemented and that's the end of the story. What about other issues that uh, uh, SAFTU is raising, for instance restoring the right of workers to strike over things like unfair dismissal, uh, bosses not being able to use scab labor, uh, uh, labor. the um, Minister, of, uh, uh, Minister of Labor must still be authorized to make sectoral determination. I mean surely these demands that are being put forward by SAFTU no, no, no. Uh, do have a certain degree of legitimacy? No, no, no that, is, that, is, that is just mistaken. The point is this, any person that is unfairly dismissed must 
must take his case to the CCMA. The process is there's not attorneys allowed in there, and those processes can be done by ordinary shop stewards, and they can deal with social justice issues. On the issue in terms of when a union want to go on a strike, you would remember a few years ago we had this Marikana incident where we wanted people to make a decision and nobody could make a decision. And that is the reason why we introduced the fact that the members are entitled to make a decision, and a decision making is a ballot. What about the point that SAFTU makes that all of the measures, including the national minimum wage and others that have outlined are, and I quote, simply aimed at taking power away from unions? In other words, delegitimizing uh, the role that you have to play in a very tight economy. No, look, our constitution provides for a framework of cooperation between employers and trade unions. And that's the reason why the balance between the trade unions and employers is set. And that's the reason why negotiations and social dialogue plays an important role. And when the parties are not able to reach an agreement, then we reach out to the international labor organization. We look out to benchmark approaches. But from South Africa's point of view, we have already moved away from that approach of a confrontational approach over nothing.